Hey guys, my name is Adman and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Java. So, let's get started. Okay, what is Java? Well, we can say that simply Java is a programming language like any other, like Python, Ruby, whatever, C Sharp, C++. Yeah, so those are programming language and Java is as well a programming language. More specifically, Java is an object-oriented programming language or OOP. And this is a paradigm uh, based on the concept of objects. So OOP or otherwise uh, OOP or uh, object oriented programming language is about encapsulating a uh, data and behavior into objects. So as you can see here on this picture, we have a nice lady and this lady has a class of human. So uh, say like uh, human car or bicycle or this keyboard, whatever. These are all class, right? And whatever this lady has, these are known as attributes, so like her name, her age, her date of birth, her email address, her phone number, uh, whatever, her favorite color, those are all attributes to this object. Is all right. So object is, sorry, a class is actually human or whatever object and everything that the object has is known as attribute. I know it is a bit extra now, but it will be clear. Okay, so where is Java used? Well, Java is standard for enterprise computing. So say like after your three year or four year of computer science degree, when you go to workplace, your employer will take as granted that you know Java. So you know methods, you know how to code in Java, everything about Java. So yeah, that's the minimum thing that they expect you to know. Next, Java is also used to build Android apps. So it's very, very, um, well, not now, but it commonly is a, it's still a good language to build uh, Android apps, Java. And Java is also used in a financial program. So uh, yeah, in financial institution, they still use Java as the main programming language. Java is used in security programs and Java is also used in big data program. It is a demanding language and it's worth learning about it. Now, the first step to write any program. Well, the first step is think like a computer. The second one is write a pseudocode. The third one is translate uh, your pseudocode into Java code. And the fourth one is test. Guys, the first one, computer is dumb. It doesn't know anything. Uh, so it only follows your guide. Think as it your four year old nephew or your, if, if you have a brother, for your four year old, whatever, you can't trust him basically. You can't trust him. You have to always guide him and you have to always follow him in everything. So computer is the same thing. You have to pretty much guide him and tell him to do that and he will follow it. The second step is writing a pseudocode. Guys, okay, pseudocode might seem a fancy word, but it's not. Pseudocode just means write in a plain, simple English. Very short and uh, easy to understand. That's what pseudocode is. Now, the third step is uh, translated into Java code. Now, once you know the pseudocode, try to convert that phrase into actual uh, Java uh, code. So say like if you wrote in your pseudocode, uh, add one to X, right? In a Java code, that will be x plus one or one plus x sorry x plus one yeah so that's how you uh, write a pseudocode you first write in a uh, simple english plain english and then underneath that you write in a uh, uh, java code so once you've written your pseudocode once you have translated that into uh, actual java code the fourth and final step is to test guys you have to test with whole range of uh, stuff so try with everything and see if that works because testing is very very important now we're gonna be actually coding something. So the, we have two exercises here. The first one is we're gonna be uh, displaying hello world. And the second exercise, we're gonna be displaying the result of two plus three. So let's see. Okay, so um, yeah. In order to run Java, you need to use a compiler. So the free compiler that I am currently using is called online, online GDB. Uh, yeah, online GDB. This is the free compiler for Java that I'm using. But otherwise, I would use IntelliJ. So this is the one, uh, yeah, IntelliJ, uh, IDEA. So, but this is uh, this is uh, pricey. I think it's called about twelve pound a month. So yeah, if you want a free alternative, then uh, this is a great alternative. So online G uh, DB. Okay. Now click on Java compiler. Okay. As you can see now, we've got uh, this interface. I'm gonna be just yeah minimizing that okay i'm gonna be also get rid of that there you go so just ignore uh this part because this is commented out just don't worry about it 
I can just get rid of that like that. So as you can see on line one, we have a public class main. So this means that main is your uh, program, is the name of your program. Okay, then we have our curly brackets and inside this we have two lines of code. Okay, so the first line of code, it says public static void main string argis. So uh, this is a keyword and this allows you to type, to print something on your uh, console. So the top part and uh, this line will stay fixed. You don't need to make any changes. And inside here, we can put our own code. I'm going to get rid of this. And okay, over here, from uh, this bracket to this bracket, we can put our code. Okay, so I'm going to be typing, um, yeah, so I'm going to be printing hello world on our uh, console. So I'll just try to do that. So the keyword for that is, is system. Yeah, system dot out dot uh, print. As you can see, uh, the thing is that's coming uh, underneath there whenever I write, I type some character, it's called IntelliSense. So this allows you to find stuff more quicker and make avoid any errors. So it's very useful to have IntelliSense in your uh, yeah console compilers. Okay, so println. Now println and print, they do two different things. So println will print your um, line of code into a new line and print will print to right next to it. So that's the main, main difference. So I'll show you. println, okay, now hello world, world, okay, hello world. Now at the end you have to put a semicolon, yeah, just to show that the your code line is done. Okay, after that I'm just going to be running. So if you just go here on the screen, uh, yeah, run or F9 for shortcut, for shortcut. There you go. As you can see, it has printed hello world on our console. So this area is known as console, where you can see your output. Okay. So the next exercise we have to do is we have to display the result of two plus three. So we have to display a result of an operation. So uh, let's just try to do that. Okay. So. Therefore, what we have to do, we have to work inside this uh, system uh, out printer land because this will allow us to print uh, yeah, the required result. So I'm going to get rid of this part here. So double apostrophe, hello world. So double apostrophe means that inside uh, double apostrophe, you can have a, a string, so string value. So that will allow you to print string value. So very important. Now I'm going to be just typing two plus three and run. And let's see. Now, as you can see, we have successfully printed the uh, the outcome. So that's five. And yeah, as you can see, it's very, very simple. So if I just uh, change the operator here, minus and run, should give you minus one here. Yeah, there you go, minus one. And same for other operators as well. Okay, so next, um, yeah, commenting. Commenting is very, very useful in any programming language in the world. Uh, whether that is Java, Python, Ruby, or C++, C Sharp, whatever uh, program language is very, very useful. And commenting is useful for yourself and for other people as well. So it's very, very useful for readability. So um, say like later on, someone else is uh, maintaining the code that you have written six months ago in a company. And based on your comment, they will be able to understand what that specific code is doing. So it's very, very important for uh, troubleshooting for a maintenance of a, a program. So commenting, make sure you do always comment your code. Now I'll show you how to comment, uh, yeah, the two way to comment in Java. Now one thing to say here, the comment will be ignored by, uh, by your compiler, by Java. So it uh, doesn't matter how long your comment is, it will be ignored. So it will not uh, take any space or uh, count as a, a program code. So yeah, feel free to write long comments as well if you want to. Now, uh, okay, so the first way you can comment is uh, using a double forward slash. So this allows you to comment until the end of the line. So I'll show you here. Okay. So if I just add a few more, Control C, Control V, Control V. There you go. Okay. And if I add just double four uh, slash like that, as you can see, it has commented till the end of the line. Okay. So this is the first way to comment. And the second way to comment is using polar slash and asterisk, and also ending with asterisk and uh, four slash. And I'll show you what that does. So uh, if I just comment using double uh, forward slash and asterisk, 
as you can see it has everything on so it has commented everything else if i want to just uh comment these two line but this line will be visible i have to, I have to go here and then uh, uh, asterisk and forward slash and that will allow me to okay so over here maybe there you go and that will allow me to uh, comment out these two lines however this line will run uh, perfectly fine just to show you i'll just uh, try them so two plus okay as you can see if i just run it so we should have only two numbers right as you can see two values over here five and minus one so this means that these two lines are commented out and also the color we have a, a brown color that shows you that it has commented out so the program is just ignoring it now the next thing that we need to be understanding is how java uh, reads our code okay so we always write in uh, uh, .java so say like you're creating a program and you're calling it coffee for example uh, the file that you'll be writing and saving will be coffee.java right uh, then your uh, your compiler which is the location you're writing your code so say like this one is online compiler for instance this is known as compiler and uh, yeah so your compiler will convert that code so a coffee.java code into coffee.class so class is readable by java and you just don't worry about attempting to read uh, .class uh, files because those are unreadable okay so so uh, yeah it converts your java files to class so uh, that is readable by a uh, java yeah, programming language and then java just execute the, your program so three step first you write your code into uh, something.java then your compiler converts that something.java uh, to something.class uh, and finally java execute those program okay variables what is a variable now a variable is something that can change so say like in algebra we should do like x plus 3 x plus 4 which is equal to so things like those x and y are variables for instance that can store value so yeah like x plus y in algebra x plus 2 is 5 so what is the value of x that's 3 3 plus 3 is 5 so yeah that's 3 okay so x and y is variable because that can store value for you now a variable in java needs to be declared first with the type and name yeah so i need to have a, a type first and then the name so what is the type you want you want the variable to so it can be integer can be boolean can be string or whatever float whatever it, it, it has to have a type and then a name okay so like integer number then we assign a value to it so in the next line we'll say number is equal to one we are assigning one to uh the the variable right so over here i'll just show you an example if i just get rid of all of this okay so integer i'm going to be calling a number semicolon number sorry num so what we're doing here is we have declared a variable so we have given the uh, data type uh, first so it is an integer so it can store integer uh, numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and we are calling it number yeah so that's the name we are giving to this uh, variable next we are assigning uh, one number one to number so we are assigning that one uh, number one to this variable called number okay so current number therefore has one so if i just print out number you should print out two let's see so system Put out sorry if i just print number now i should see one whoops semicolon i missed out over here yeah there you go <laughs> guys always make sure you uh, finish with the semicolon otherwise yeah there you go so we got one right therefore it is uh, printing the value we have stored on the integer if i change the value here just to show you say like 90 sorry yeah 990 let's see if it works yeah it is working or otherwise another alternative way to do this is we can uh, do at the same time so we can uh, declare it and also sign it so i'll show you here so i'm just going to be doing a new line so i'm going to be uh yeah there you go here 
Okay, so integer, I'm gonna call it number two uh, equal to uh, 10. There you go. So what I've done, I first declared, so given the uh, data type here, and then I'm, I'm uh, uh, assigning a name to this variable, like here, and then I'm getting rid of this part over here, and directly assigning equal to a value, so equal to 10. So pretty much I got rid of this part. And this is kind of shorter way to do and much quicker. So yeah, you can do either way. And if I just print uh, number two, so I'm too lazy, I'm just gonna be copying and pasting now. Okay, number two, I should see in a new line of uh, 10. Let's see. Yeah, there you go, 10. So it is working. So yeah, this is how you declare a variable. So you first need to be declaring with the type, data type and uh, assign a name. And then you have to be, you can assign a value to it uh, in the next step. Or you can just do everything at the same time. Now, next, data types. So what are the data types available for uh, Java? Guys, these are just a few uh, data types. There are plenty of data types in Java. So these are just a fraction of data type. However, these are the main one yeah, that you're gonna be using uh, very often. So integer, integer can store only uh, whole numbers. So numbers three, six, nine, 10, 12, whatever. Those are all integers number, those are whole numbers. Then we have floats. So float can store a uh, decimal value, yeah? Decimal numbers. So 1.25 or 2.80, uh, 3.69, and yeah, those are all uh, uh, decimal number. And then we have double. So double can store large number. So it can be integer, can be decimal, but large number. Then we have Boolean. So Boolean can only store true or false or yes or no value. So an example of this can be, have you had breakfast this morning? An answer of that has to be yes or no. There's no third uh, option. So you, you you had breakfast this morning or either you, you, you didn't have breakfast this morning. There's no third uh, alternative to this. So that's Boolean. Then we have char. So char stands for character and therefore can only store character. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And finally we have string. So string can store words. So say like your name, your date of birth. So date of birth word itself, your address word itself. Uh, these are all example of uh, string. And that's pretty much it guys. This was a brief introduction to Java and I'm planning to create more video on Java in future. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.